Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the use of the drug methotrexate in anti-cancer chemotherapy. Okay, so before we can understand uh, the way that methotrexate is going to work, we need to uh, understand a little bit about uh, the folic acid pathway and what folic acid is used to do, because basically Methotrexate is going to target this enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase, and in order to understand why that is going to affect cells, we need to understand what this is actually doing. So we've seen so far that it's going to be involved in converting folic acid into dihydrofolate. So it has reduced the folic acid by breaking this double bond here. Okay, now what it's going to do is convert dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. So you're going to bring in another two hydrogen atoms, okay? So two protons and two electrons, and you're going to add them into the dihydrofolate structure to create tetrahydrofolate. And this is why this enzyme is known as dihydrofolate reductase, because it's going to reduce dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate. So it's the same enzyme which reduces both folic acid and then dihydrofolate. Okay, so we'll draw out our structure again. Okay, so here is this carbonyl group again. Here is our nitrogen within this semi-primidine ring. And then we've got our amino group coming off here. Okay, and then the nitrogen here. And then up here as well. Right, so you then have a double bond here, a double bond here. And then we've got the what's left of the pyrazine ring now. Uh, you're going to break the other of the double bonds within the pyrazine ring. So this bond is going to go this time. So you're going to break uh, the second of the two bonds between this nitrogen and this carbon. And one electron is going to go back to each of the constituents of this bond. And then this nitrogen will bind to one of these hydrogen atoms and this carbon will bind to the other. So you'll get a hydrogen coming off this nitrogen. Okay. And then we'll have another hydrogen coming off this carbon, but of course you don't show that because we're drawing a skeletal structure. And then you've still got this nitrogen with a hydrogen off it down here. Okay, then we've got the methylene group there with the nitrogen up here, hydrogen coming off this nitrogen, and then it's attached to a benzene ring here, which is always drawn small just because it's in an awkward position. Okay, so this is a benzene ring. And then off here comes this carbonyl group up here. And then it's involved in this amide link between uh, this molecule here, which is, um, uh, well, is now reduced, uh, but would have been known as teroic acid before. So in folic acid, by the way, uh, this molecule where you had, if you imagine cutting off this glutamate right at the end and putting an alcohol group off there, that would be known as teroic acid. Okay, spelt like so, teroic acid. However, we've now reduced it somewhat, so it would no longer be known as teroic acid. Uh, and then you've got um, the uh, amino acid glutamate coming off here. So here's the carboxylic acid group up here. Okay, here's the alpha carbon, and then the R group is two methylene groups, and then on the end, a carboxylic acid group here. Okay, so this now is tetrahydrofolate. Okay, tetrahydrofolate, often abbreviated to THF for short, THF. So, next what we're going to do is convert tetrahydrofolate further into something known as N5N10 methylene, sorry, N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Okay, so let's see how this works, because this is actually very important because uh, we are going to use N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate um, to um, for our reaction to build uh, a component of DNA, which is why this pathway is so important. Okay, right, so let's see how we convert this to N5N10 tetrahydrofolate. Okay, right, so let's try and squash this structure in down here. So, again, we have this 
pyrimidine ring, or at least near pyrimidine ring over here. So the six-membered ring with these two nitrogens. Here's the second nitrogen. And we have a double bond here, double bond here, an amino group off here. Okay. Then we have what was our pyrazine ring, but now has been reduced twice. And now has four extra hydrogens on it. So it's no longer a pyrazine ring. Okay, so here and here. Oh, actually, I need to... Sorry, we're talking about N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate. So it's not actually going to have that anymore. So um, I'll actually talk you through the reaction, what we're going to do uh, first. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop both of these bonds here off. Okay, then we're going to bring in a carbon atom, okay? And you can see now we've got a hydrogen atom, a hydrogen atom, and both of these nitrogen atoms have a lone electron as well. So what we're going to do is bring this carbon in, and this carbon is going to bind to both of the nitrogens. So you'll get a bond to this nitrogen, a bond to this nitrogen, and then this carbon needs two more bonds, so it will bind to both of these hydrogens here as well. And that's what's going to create this methylene group. So let's get rid of this hydrogen here. Okay, so that's gone. And instead we're going to have a methylene group there. And it's going to link these two nitrogens together. Okay, so let's try and repair the damage that I've done here. So here's this nitrogen. And now remember we're drawing a skeletal structure. So the carbon is shown by a corner. And this corner has only two bonds, so it's implied then that the other two bonds are to hydrogen atoms. So this is indeed what I've described up there. Okay, and then apart from that, it's going to be exactly the same. So you're now going to have this uh, benzene ring here. Okay, so here's the benzene ring. And then off here, you then have the amide link here. And this is the first one, it's actually fitted in nicely. Okay, so then here we have the alpha carbon with the carboxylic acid group coming off up here. And then the R group of the glutamate, one, two, and then three. And then off here you have this carboxylic acid group here, like so. Okay, so this now has the big name N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And to understand the name of that, I need to explain to you the numbering system on these ring structures here. So N5, N10, methylene, tetra, and there should be a little dash there, tetrahydrofolate. Let me just check this is in screen. Yep, yeah, excellent. All right, so Let's go back up to our original folic acid molecule and discuss the numbering uh, of this uh, double ring structure here. So basically you start off with this nitrogen here and you call that number one. Then this carbon here is two, three, and you continue going on round, four. Now when you've got a structure that's in between both rings, you don't give that its own extra number. Instead you call that 4A. And if anyone knows more about chemistry and can explain to me the logic in doing that, I would be delighted to hear it, but it seems to be just a rule as far as I can uh, tell. And then this next one is five, six, seven, eight, and then this is 8A. Then you continue on. This is 9, and this is 10. So you can see now the logic in... Wait a second, have I even shown this? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, you can see now the logic in saying N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate, because we have put a methylene in between the 5th and the 10th nitrogen on this um, molecule, basically. So this numbering system go transfers to tetrahydrofolate, and we've then uh, put a methylene group between the fifth and the tenth uh, members of this um, structure. Okay, right, so we've gone far enough now, you'll be glad to hear. This molecule is now going to perform what we need it to perform. And what we need it to perform is the transformation of deoxyuridine monophosphate, or a uracil nucleotide, into thymidine monophosphate, or a thymine nucleotide. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.